Hey guys, Dan with you today, and we are talking about stretching. So why are we talking about stretching? Well, first of all, probably 97% of us have no idea what stretching does. And what we need to know is, as we get older, our joints and our muscles tend to stiffen up and we lose a lot of range of movement. So what does that mean to us? Well, first thing is, we are way more prone to injuries because our joints will not move as freely as they used to. So when we slam, there's a good chance we're gonna get injured and severely injured. Also, since we're not 20 anymore, when we slam, uh, slams that would have taken us out of skating for maybe a few days might take us out of skating for a few months. So we need to stretch. Second thing is, there are a lot of tricks that we might not be able to do anymore because of that loss of range of movement. Uh, Steve Caballero had a great interview on the Ride Channel a few months ago talking about this. There's a lot of tricks that I can't do that I wish I could do if I put the work in and stretched years ago. So now I'm paying the price. So if there was any kind of advice I would give skaters mm -hmm. if they want to skate in their 50s is stretch. <laughs> But yeah, stretching, man, that's, that's one key if you want longevity. So after that interview, Cab went on and did a serious stretching routine and he got back a lot of tricks. He was posting clips online of stuff that he had not done for years. So if stretching is good for a legend like Cab, it's good for us and we need to do it. So there are two main types of stretches. There's dynamic, and there's static stretching. What we're gonna talk about today is static stretching. But just to explain the difference, a dynamic stretch is a, a really active stretch where you will basically warm up the joints. That's what we used to do when we were kids in uh, gym class. You know, our teacher would have us go, stuff like that. That's a dynamic stretch. A static stretch is basically getting into a stretch position holding the stretch for a period of time. So we're not like jerking the movement and we're not swinging around, we're holding a contraction. It should be a little bit painful, but we don't wanna go past the pain point. So basically dynamic stretches should be done before skating, okay? These will help you get warmed up and not injure yourself. But static stretching should be done after your skate session or as I like to do them, right before bed. Why? Well, they're gonna help with flexibility, but they're gonna help you relax, get a better night's sleep, and the body recuperates while we're sleeping. So there's a myth that anything you do, your body's like adapting to it immediately. Like, I don't know, you're trying to get bigger arms or bigger pecs and you're working out. They're not getting bigger then. You're tearing down muscle fiber and it will build itself back up at rest. So if we're stretching right before going to bed, we're relaxing ourselves, we're having a better night's sleep, and the body has hours to heal. So that's the good part of it. And if you're doing static stretching before, like going riding, it's, it's a, a bad thing because static stretching will, uh, you'll have a loss of power and immediate response. So that's not good if you're doing it right before an activity. After, perfect. So what we're gonna to do today is I will show you a few stretches that I like to do. We're gonna focus on the lower body, but we need to stretch the whole body. So I might do something for the upper body later. So take a few of these stretches, try them out, do every one if you want, build your own routine. I like to take about 10 to 15 minutes of stretching ideally every day or every other day, as much as you can do it. And it really, really helps out to stay in shape. So you might be able to get a five, 10, 15, 20 more years of skating because of this. So let's try it out, guys, all right? It's not the most passionate of subjects, but check out the stretches. I need to do a disclaimer though, all right? I have a lot of knowledge in uh, bodybuilding, nutrition, stuff like that. 
and I'm a pretty beginner stretcher, stretcher. so I have no um, medical background in stretching, all right? So there are probably pros that are gonna watch what I do and go, oh, that's fucked up, but try it out, see what works for you guys, and if you're not sure, consult a medical professional before. So that's a legal disclaimer, so I don't get sued. All right, so let's start stretching. Hold your ankles and push your knees downwards with your elbow and always keep your back as straight as possible. You never want to cheat a movement. Now you're going to push right until you hit that little pain point. You do not want to go past that point. Now hold the stretch for 10 to 30 seconds and perform about 3 sets of these with a few seconds of rest between each set. This is Next, we're going to do a standard hamstring stretch. What you want to do is sit on the ground with both legs straight in front of you. You're going to bend your left leg and place the sole of the left foot alongside your right leg. Now, you want to have your front leg very straight and relax on the ground. You do not want to bend it. You're going to bend down, keeping your back as straight as possible. And for the first part, you're gonna use the same arm as the leg that's in front of you. For the second part, you're gonna use your opposite arm. This will be a lot harder. Now the goal is to feel a stretch in the hamstring. It's not to bend down as much as possible. The idea is feel the stretch in your hamstrings. Now go to the pain point, hold it there. Don't go past the pain point. Do this again, three repetitions of about 10 to 30 seconds. What we're going to do now is the same thing except we're going to have both of our legs next to each other, straight and right in front of you. Your ankles will be at a 90 degree angle. If you are able to, you can grab on your toes or your foot to help with the stretch. But you need to keep your back super straight and not cheat the movement. For the seated knee to chest glute stretch, the goal here is to stretch out your buttocks and your hips. What you want to do is sit with one leg straight, the other bent over your knee, pull the raised knee opposite your shoulder. Now keep your back as straight as possible and what I like to do is to put my back hand right behind my back to help with the stretch. You should feel the stretch and use your elbow to push on your leg to feel the stretch. Again. 3 sets, 10 to 30 seconds, and as always, every time you have both legs, you're going to do each side. For the sitting wide leg adductor stretch, this is one we see a lot in MMA. What you want to do is sit with your legs wide apart, keep your back super straight, and lean forward. Now, the more your legs are spread apart, the more this movement will become difficult. So that's why I like to use my arms to place them behind my knee to help get a better stretch. Now again, we're gonna hold this stretch for 10 to 30 seconds, take a few seconds rest, perform three sets of these. Now go to the pain point and hold it there. Don't go past the pain point increase difficulty again you can grab your ankles to help push you forward the standing and reaching hamstring stretch is probably the stretch that most people cheat on your back needs to be super straight as your legs do you want to reach down as much as you can and feel the stretch in your hamstrings the goal is not to cheat and touch the floor it's to get the best stretch out of your hamstrings. So your back needs to be super straight and your legs also. They are about shoulder width apart. Now I should mention I have a rounded upper back. I'm made like this, but my back is actually super straight on this one. Now the lying straight knee hamstring stretch is a pretty simple one. Just lay on your back, raise your leg, keeping it straight and pull it forwards. Now the goal is to get a hamstring stretch. Now hold the stretch for 10 to 30 seconds, three repetitions as always. 
for each leg. The first stretch we're going to do for our quads is the standing quad stretch. What you want to do is grab your ankle and bend your knee and bring it to about your butt. Now the idea here is not to try and crank down on the leg and bend it as much as possible. It's more to pull back on the leg to feel a stretch in your quads. Now most professionals will tell you to keep both of your legs at the same angle. I tend to pull mine back for some reason. It feels better to me. So you can play around with this. Now hold the position for 10 to 30 seconds, small break, and do three sets of these for each leg. You can hold down to a wall if you want to have it a little bit easier. I try to do it while keeping my balance, so it's a little bit of training for my uh, balance for skateboarding also. The lying quad stretch is probably the best feeling stretch you can get for your quads in my opinion. Now what you need to do is lay on your side and the leg that's on the floor, you need to get it forward and bend your knee at a 90 degree angle. Again, you're gonna reach behind you and grab your ankle with the other leg. Now the idea is not to crank down on your leg again, it's to pull it back so you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. What I like to do is play around with the angle of my legs so I get the perfect stretch and stretch out a little bit different fibers. Now again, hold the stretch for 10 to 30 seconds for each leg and perform three sets of these. These are awesome. The kneeling quad stretch is considered a little bit more of an advanced move, but it's really easy to do. What you need to do is get into a kneeling position like you're praying, so your butt cheeks will be resting on your heels. Your arms will be behind you and you will bend down comfortably and get a quad stretch. But while you're in that position, you will want to raise your butt cheeks off of your heels. That will give you the maximum stretch. Now hold that position for 10 to 30 seconds. I know it's not comfortable. Three sets of these will feel awesome. But please be careful. Don't bend down behind you too much so you don't fall and hurt yourself. For the hip flexor stretch, what you need to do is get your front leg at about a 90 degree angle and Put your weight on your front leg. Your back leg should be pretty much straight. Even though this is a hip flexor stretch, your back leg, the quad will feel super stretched out and it will feel really good. So hold the stretch again, 10 to 30 seconds, three repetitions of these, a few seconds of rest in between. For the straight leg calf stretch, what you need to do is get your feet in front of you completely straight. Keep your back straight and bend down while keeping your ankles completely angled at the same angle as your leg. Once you're in the peak position, bring your ankles back towards your body. This will stretch out the calves a lot. For the standing calf stretch, what you will do is get close to the wall. You're going to take a step forward and place your foot at about a 45 degree angle on the wall. Your leg will be completely straight and your back leg will be bent. Once you're in the position, move your body weight forward. This will stretch out the calf a lot. Do as always, three sets of these for about 10 to 30 seconds and you should be done. So that's static stretching. So I know it's not super passionate, but if you do it every day, every other, other day, as much as you can do it, it's gonna give you a lot more years of skating, maybe five, 10, 20, whatever. Anything that can keep us skating is worthwhile. So I personally spend about 10 to 15 minutes per day, right before bedtime to stretch. So try it out after a few sessions, I'm sure you're gonna feel it. So if you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, tell me what you think, leave comments, and uh, yeah, let's continue skating for as long as we can. All right, see you guys.